Okay, welcome to the next part of the language composition and uh, modularization demo. Now we want to talk about uh, composing two completely independent languages. In the case of the um, UI forms, the language, the UI language had a dependency directly to the uh, entity's language. And now we want to define two languages that are completely separate and only then combine them in a common context. So we start by defining the persistence of database language. It, uh, I guess that's the kind of stuff you can write. I don't think I have to say much about that. Just the same structure as entities, but with different primitive types and kind of different things here, but the same structure. So the meta model looks something like that. You have a database that contains tables, which contains columns. Columns have types and names. I'll talk about this guy in a second. Because what we want to do then is we want to be able to add mapping information that says the ID column of the database table departments is mapped from the department.id field. And the people's person's name is the employee name. So we want to be able to express this mapping. But this information, of course, is specific to the entities language. And we don't want to put that into the database language. So we need to do something here. And the trick that we use here, sorry, I scrolled too fast. The trick that we use here is this database mapper, column mapper, sorry. That's an abstract concept, abstract language concept. And we can then specialize it to uh, use, to be used in different contexts in specialized form. So let's look at the code. Code is always good. So um, first of all, let me show you that it works. Here is the company database. Right, and here are the references to the uh, entity fields. So let's take a look at the language that defines the database stuff. That should be straightforward. Here is the rel mapping, relational mapping language. It has the usual suspects here, you know, data types, column, and so on. Not very interesting. Here is the column mapper, which is an abstract concept. And if you look at a column, it owns a column mapper. But again, it doesn't say anything about how this mapper looks like and what it points to. That means that this whole database language is completely independent of any other language. There's no relationship to any other language, which you can, if you want to, if you don't believe me, you can look at the dependencies and there is nothing. It's only that like, it uses the language design dev kit, but there's no dependency to other languages. Now, to be able to combine the rel mapping and the entity language we create a sub language it's called rel mapping entities and if you look at its properties you can see that it extends both the entities and the rel mapping language and what does it do well it it implements an adapter as usual so the only thing it contains in terms of concepts is a, a subtype of the column mapper it's the attribute column mapper and it points to an attribute and by that we can now use this guy where the database language expects a column mapper and this special subtype of column mapper actually points to an entity and so that's how we combine the two so we have three languages rel mapping which is independent rel uh, entities which is independent and rel mapping entities which extends both and which establishes the dependency so um well that's basically the trick <laughs> now the generated code is also interesting because if we look at the rel mapping language, well, let me first show you the generated code and it's easier to uh, understand. Whoops, let's uh, look at the preview, the generated text. Here is a company DB base adapter. This is a class that is generated exclusively from the rel mapping language. No knowledge about entities. It has methods to create tables for both of them. It just does some SQL stuff. It's not important. And then it has store methods where you pass in some kind of data. We don't specify what that is. It's at this point just an object. And um, it does some kind of insert. And then it expects, it has these abstract methods here. Get value for department ID, get value for department description. So for each column in our database, there is an abstract method that acts as a getter. Again, it's abstract, so this thing itself doesn't work. However, if we now look at the company DB adapter, notice the base is gone. This class is generated from the rel mapping entities language, which at this point knows about um, the relationship between the two. And it only 
implements these abstract methods in a way that it expects this application data to be an array of stuff and then it does some casting and, and grabs out the actual ID. And um, obviously this could be done more elegantly, but at this point it's good enough. The interesting characteristic is the code generated from the entities language, which is the Java beans, the code generated from the realm mapping language, which is this abstract class that can store data. It doesn't know yet about what the structure is. And this class, which fills in the blanks in terms of where the database persistence class gets the data from, these three are independent. So there can be independent generators. We've already seen a long time ago the generator for the entities language. We can now look at the generator for the realm mapping language. And it bum, 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 creates this, we can look here, this base adapter class. And it basically has these create methods for all of the tables. And it does some SQL stuff, which isn't really interesting at this point. Um, it creates these store methods where it calls these um, get value for methods, and it somehow creates a name for each of the you know table underscore column columns. And then here are the abstract methods, which again use the same naming convention. I could have factored that out into a helper method. So the realm mapping entities language generates a subtype of this right base adapter it's called adapter names could be better as usual <laughs> and it only fills in the um, well it basically implements the abstract methods to somehow extract the data from an array of entity java beans and this way the two languages are independent they generate as much code as possible. And then there is this third language which establishes the relationship between the two and it generates a third piece of code which, um, again, inherits from the base class and points to the entities, Java beans, and thereby combines the two. So this is the example of reusing independent languages. They have no relationship, the realm mapping and the entities language, with a third language that acts as the glue between them. In this case the generated code also is separate and it can be glued together by a third piece of code, the subclass. In the next example, we'll lift this limitation and look at what we do if the code actually kind of has to be merged in some way and the artifacts are not separated.